Well, hey, McFly subscribers. So I am tying another bait fish partagon. It's the same color I've tied before. You can tie this in multiple different colors, but I have an order for this. A uh, gentleman wants 12 of them. So tying them up for him. And I figured I'd bring you guys along. And then we're just gonna put the hook in the vise with the bead already on it. Now, the best way to put the bead on is to put the bead in your hand and then bring the hook point to it. I've showed that in many videos before, but I'm using the Risen Fly Barbless Jig Hook. These are really good hooks for the price, um, just hard to beat, and size 10. Uh, this gentleman's going to be fishing in Florida uh, for sunfish, maybe even bass, and I think it's just a really good good uh, size for him. So, And then I'm using 3.5 millimeter tungsten slotted beads. In the last video I used a 3, but I was using size 12 hook, so the 3.5 is good for this. You just don't want it too big um, because you don't want a really big transition between the bead and the hook. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute here. So first we're going to put 0 0.015 size lead wire. This is actually lead free wire on the hook. We're going to do five turns. One, two, three, four, five. Break it off. You see how there's a tag end there? I'm just going to push that up into the the slot in the bead. And by the way, when you're doing these, most of these beads have like a curved side and then a flat side on the bead, and that curved side should be up. You gotta make sure that's orientated correctly because as you can see, the flat side, it's not going forward. But once you turn that, now it rests, okay? You wanna make sure you do that. Okay, and that's gonna do a couple things. One, it's gonna add a little more weight, and two, that's gonna basically enlarge that collar right there. Let's make sure this is all right. So now I've got uh, Viva Six Ot in white, okay, and we're just going to start our thread right behind that lead. We can break or you know cut the thread, and we're just going to carefully go up through the lead to keep it positioned correctly and then we're going to bring this all the way down to the start of the bend of the hook and go just right into the bend slightly okay but then you want to come right back up you want to make sure this is right at the bend it's going to have the material not angled down you want it to angle straight so you can use anything with the tail but i've got this uh whiting chickaboo patch and grizzly that's what the patch looks like Okay, it's hard to see on the camera because you're in so tight, but they're chickaboo basically. It's like marabou, but they're smaller feathers. Okay, I really like this for tails. Um, so I find if I wet that tail, it makes the tie-in easier. And you don't need a lot of this tail. We're just gonna tie this in two wraps. We can then adjust. I'm gonna get a little bit more tail. That's about right. Well, let's redo this because I think I went into the bend a little bit. I'm afraid that's going to have that positioned incorrectly. So there we go. Make a couple tight wraps. Make sure that's on there. And then we're going to cut this off. You can see where the lead starts. It's a little bump there. So we just want to cut that off right before that bump. It'll help transition this a little better. And we can bring our thread up through it. And then we want to come back down when that's angled up. So let's go ahead and make sure that this tail is going to be angled straight. There we go. And that'll fluff out and look a little more like a tail, just like this one here. Now, little bait fish have pearl bodies, so I've got this flashaboo. Okay, and I got four strands of it. If you were tying a little bit smaller, you want to go with three. Uh, maybe even two if it's really small But there are four strands so you want to lay this so the tips extend right to that um, Wire okay, and we're just going to tie this in we're going to bring up our thread And you can tell that there's a sort of like a tapered body or at least straight, okay, 
and then we're just going to go ahead and start winding this on. You can tell that that s separates out a little bit and creates kind of like a ribbed body in a way. That'll look really good. Now you want to end with this down. Okay. And then we're going to sort of wrap over it and then pull it back and wrap over it to get it up out of the way. That'll really lock it in anyway. Um, keep it on there really tight. And next, I've got this. This is um, Crystal Flash. Okay, so that's basically it's flashaboo, but it's um, twisted. And we're going to tie this in right directly on top. We're going to make sure that the tips extend right to before the bead there. Okay. We're going to set that aside. If you have like a little clip or something to clip this back, that'll help. But you don't need it necessarily. And then we're just going to finish wrapping the flashaboo to create a pearl looking collar here. We'll capture that. One wrap over it and then wrap back. And that shouldn't go. Um, it shouldn't get loose. And always wet when you're done. If you've got a lot of strands, wet it and that'll keep it together for next time. And now since you're tied directly on top, I want to pull this back and pinch it with your fingers. And tie this in directly behind that bead, like so. Then you want to take a bodkin like this. You want to carefully come in and pull some of that fiber back. Like so. You're creating a little bump there. And then I pull this back. I've been doing this because you've created a white collar and that doesn't look as good. You want to make sure it's all pearl. And this will help give a little more bulk. You can see that that transitions a little better into the bead. It's almost flat and you can even go a little bit more. Make sure that's in there and then capture it. Wrap over, wrap under. You know what? Let me redo that, guys. <laughs> Make sure I finish right at top here. So wrap over, um, wrap under it, then over it again, and we're gonna cut that off. And that didn't finish right on top, but that's okay. You can cut it off real close and that won't be an issue. You just don't want that messing up the, the eyes. Okay, there we go, so that's flat in there. Then we're just gonna whip finish. It doesn't have to be a very strong whip finish, but you kinda wanna finish on top. Most everything except for the flashaboo, finish on top. There we go. Now, next, what I do, so I tie these in steps. Make sure that's sticking up a little bit because that's important to this fly. You'll see in a second why. Next, get some Loctite uh, gel super glue. And actually, it doesn't have to be Loctite, just some kind of gel super glue, okay? Um, but something with a precision tip that you can get a small little dot on. And I've got these. They are three millimeter. The fish skull living eyes, they don't have to be the fish skull. I think they're really nice looking, but you could use anything but the three millimeter size. We're gonna grab two, put them on our hand for a second to prepare them and get them ready. Because this part you'll have to kind of work semi-quickly. And right at the start of that thread and the bead, just put a tiny 
tiny little dot. You don't want a lot, okay? Just a tiny dot, because otherwise the glue gets to be too much and it's hard to work with. So put one on, we're gonna adjust in a second, okay? But put the other one on. You can see that they're not positioned correctly, so just carefully nudge one to where you want it. That's about right. And then you wanna take it out and look at it on the front, and that's actually pretty even there. You don't want one kind of canted wrong. All right, and then I just let that dry, and then I'll tie. Um, in fact, I pull it off the vise carefully. Don't mess with the eyes. I've got this little block of foam that I just stick it on like so. Hard to see. I just put it on and I set that aside and I'll tie however many I'm going to tie. In this case, 12 of them. Well, 10 more because <laughs> I've already tied two. Um, and then I come back and I will then resin this up. Okay, but that's done with the tying portion. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these 12 and I'll come back once this dries and show you what to do from this point on. Now this is dried and I've got this <laughs> wrapper kind of got looking funky. It should look like that. Solarez um, bone dry, but the translucent colored. Okay, this one's pink. I'm going to use red, and that's what this is. It's exactly the same thing, but it's red, but this got all damaged. Um, in the move, it fell over, and I didn't have this tightened well, and so <laughs> it got everywhere. But you want to shake it really well before using it to make sure that color is in there. And then that's what this little bump of uh, Flashaboo is for because that's going to hold that. Now we're making you're going to want to cure from both sides, kind of quickly go back and forth here. And then you can turn it upside down, really get that cure. Because when you're curing it, it wants to push for some reason, it pushes that liquid um, one direction. So if you were to cure on one side, it would, it would be not even. And you know what, I want to make that a little bit bigger of a bump. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little more. There we go. We're going to turn it upside down to make sure it's not going to run into the eyes too much. It kind of went over a little bit. So that's okay. That will get covered up a little bit. Nothing in nature is perfect. So if your flies aren't perfect, congratulations, you made a more natural looking fly. Right, I'm gonna do one more here. There we go, so that added quite a bit of pink. And then we'll use the rest of this stuff to be able to improve that. We're going to keep this this way, okay? And next, we're going to use this as another solar res product. It's the color resin, but this is not the um, translucent. This is straight black, okay? And it comes out in like this paintbrush thing. The problem is that's too much for us to use. So I'm going to use this little bodkin. I want to keep like a little paper towel close by in case you drip, but also to kind of wipe it off of the bodkin. We're just going to get a little bit on the bodkin we are going to make a ribbed back or a darker color back okay and then we're going to turn this upside down to make sure you want to wipe this with the, with the paper towel to get all the color off and take your uv cure light you want to cure from the top directly on top and start turning it a little bit back and forth here to really make sure that nothing goes one way or the other as much and then we can cure from the top. And a little bit's gonna run, as you can see, a little bit there. And that just gives a mottled look, and that's okay. Um, it'll turn out okay. Then, so it's a lot of solar res. That's what this is, it's a lot of solar res. But next we're gonna use this thin hard formula. And we are, you wanna get, you wanted to make sure that you clean this off, right? So no resin on it, because um, you'll need that bog candy. And we're just gonna put a little bit more on the 
top and on the bottom. And we can kind of work that around with the bobkin. We're going to make sure this is coated all the way down. I'm going to grab some here and coat the side. Coat the other side. Bring some from the top. Get underneath. We might need to add another drop of this. We shall see how this turns out. I'm going to keep this upside down. So that way it kind of drips into the bottom here a little more. We're going to cure from far away. So what we're going to do is I've got this uh, light pretty far back here. I'm going to start curing while spinning it. And that's going to give it a nice even coat. And then you can, once that starts to cure, just slowly bring it closer and closer as you're spinning it. And then there we go. That's nice and hard. And you could be done right here, but for more added security and just kind of finish it up and make it look even nicer, I've got the Solarez Bone Dry or ultra thin, they call it. And it comes with a little handy paintbrush. And uh, my paintbrush is starting to separate. It's okay, it'll work for this fly. Uh, but they do sell replacement brushes that you just replace if this happens. I use this so often and I'm not always careful. So, cause I'm, you know, I'm tying so many flies. We're just coating everything, even over the, um, the little fish eyes there. Don't get any in the eye of the hook though, okay? Just make sure you don't do that. We're just coating the whole thing. I'm gonna keep this spinning. We're gonna do the same thing, cure from farther away. And then we're gonna bring that a little closer as, as you come in. Let's do one more coat of that resin. Especially over the head here and the eyes bulk that up a little bit more. Make sure that the whole back is covered. Of course you don't want to cover the tail, leave the tail there so it has a little movement. I'm just going to go ahead and spin this, gear from far away, and then bring this closer. There we go. That is the finished bait fish partagon. Someone had mentioned before that it's not really a partagon. You're right, it's not. Um, but I mean, it's about the closest thing to uh, you know what this is. I don't really know what to call it. So um, it's a jig hook, so maybe jigged bait fish. I'm not 100% sure what you could call it, but I decided to call it bait fish partagon because I was kind of in the mood of making partagons before. And I was making this and you know, just kind of clicked in my head that it's a bait fish partagon. So anyway, um, if you haven't already, check out my sponsor, Risen Fly. They're the ones that make this the hooks and the beads that I used. Um, great prices, by the way, for tungsten slotted beads. I mean, you just can't beat their prices. Go check them out. They're just hard, hard to beat, okay? Um, really, really good prices for hooks and beads. Uh, they also sell rods and reels, um, that great quality rods and reels at a really good price. So, um, plus even better, you guys get a discount. So go ahead, check them out. Go to www.risenfly.com and then type in Mick Fly. That's the checkout code, um, the discount code. So do that at checkout, type that in and you will get 15% off of anything you buy in their shop. Okay, so that I'm on your first order. If you guys like this, please hit that like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.